Hey everybody, Tony D and Little Joan here with a hot take. Uh, I'm on my own Twitter page here, uh, as you can see. See, I got Bloody John Bacon, book six. The Highwayman Piney is out. And the, the, you just click it right there and boom, look at that cover. Ooh, look at that cover, Joan. Ooh, you love that cover, don't you? That's one of your favorites, too. Um, one of my favorite, favorite books. Get it? Somebody finally bought the first copy, a Kindle copy. He's reading it now. They're up, the, I think they're like 60 pages in. Thank you. Um, but today, uh, this, uh, this is a, like a writing tip, screenwriting tips. Uh, I guess I'll put it under. Um, this young author <laughs> put out these tweets. And uh, when I saw it, I was tempted to respond. And uh, then I made a video about it with her tweets in the mix. Do you want to get down? All right. Go on the couch. Go, go on the couch. Yeah, yeah. I'm done with you. Done with you, Joan. Um, so I, I really don't want to give her attention because I feel that her tweets um, really aren't about writing. They're, they're really, I feel... And again, I'm not trying to call her out. If you figure out who she is, please do not contact her in any way. I, I don't think you will unless you, I don't know, I guess you could search for her tweets directly. But um, this is what she wrote in her first tweet, which started a thread. And she only has about 220 followers. She's 18. Uh, and she got a bunch of responses. And she wrote, I want the confidence of a white author who uses different cultures as a backdrop for their novels. I'm literally terrified about writing my culture and messing it up, but I guess you only have that feeling when you're emotionally connected to something, huh? And I was just like, wow, <laughs> the arrogance in that tweet, the racism in that tweet, in my opinion, uh, is pretty evident, pretty evident. Now she's only 18. Again, I really don't want to call her out. I don't think she knows what she's doing. I don't think she should be called out for something she'll probably regret, you know, a few years down the road. But it's just incredibly arrogant, in my view. And, you know, the idea, like, I used to get criticized all the time, and I still do. As a writer, you get criticized in your work. And people have their half-assed opinions, whatever. Uh, sometimes you'd get criticized. Oh, there's not there's not enough diversity. Where, where are the characters? You know, there's all white characters here. Where are the... Where are the black characters? And I'd just be like, well, I don't know. I just didn't think of any. I, I really wasn't thinking about that. Because like most authors, you know, I think in terms of myself as a template, um, I think of people I know and, you know, my circle, it's a little diverse, I guess. But, you know, you tend to write what you know. And you tend to write about family and friends and... You know, if you don't grow up in a diverse background, then maybe, you know, I write about a lot of Italian characters because I grew up around a lot of Italians. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But, you know, it's it's not mandatory you write about any particular culture or thing. It's just that people tend to drift to what they know. And she's drifting to what she knows, her own culture. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I feel like her tweet, she's essentially putting it out there to be like, oh, this is why my book sucks. See, it's not that I'm a bad writer. It's just that I can't get ahead because I'm being oppressed. <laughs> and that's why I can't finish it because it's pointless and I'm being oppressed. That's just an excuse. Uh, writers make all sorts of crazy excuses not to write. Uh, wannabe writers, I'll say. And that's what she is right now. She's not written anything, as near, near as I could tell, or else she'd have a book link to her Amazon account, and she'd be like, oh, look at all the stuff I wrote. Um, but she doesn't. So I have to assume she, maybe she hasn't written anything yet. Uh, she's only 18. What could she have to say? <laughs> you know, for some of you who are like my age, you think back to when you were 18. Did you have a lot to say? I guess you had a lot to say about high school. Right? You know, about how teachers are unfair or how your parents are idiots. You know, because you're still a teenager and you're just coming into adulthood, you're not going to have a tremendous amount to say. There are very few 18 year olds that are going to write something amazing because they haven't been through anything, especially if you're an American. 
and you've lived in suburbia and nothing really ha ever happened to you and you had a soft life i mean i mean i guess you could write about the routine humdrum of suburbia but see that's writing about your culture right and culture too is a vague term it's like it can apply to many things it can apply to people of color uh, <laughs> or it can apply to i don't know the gaming community it's a gaming culture uh, you can apply it to the culture of, uh, here's a weird thing. I went to a gaming con one time at the same time they were having a convention for Volkswagen owners and it was a whole thing. I mean, these people got together cause they all bought Volkswagens and it was like a Volkswagen convention in the hotel. They brought their cars, they brought girls, they got drunk and hooked up and it was a whole scene. I never knew that's a culture. I mean, it might be a small culture, it might be kind of a stupid culture, but it's a culture. Uh, no, no offense to the Volkswagen people, but I'm saying, really, you bought a car and now you're now you're friends with everybody else who bought the same car. It's a little odd. Um, they were making fun of us, by the way, at, the, <laughs> at that same con. But uh, you know, this woman was asking, essentially asking for advice, or. Pretending like, oh, I'm not asking for advice. Uh, I don't want a response. And then, you know, putting it out there. If you don't want a response, you know exactly what to do. You can uh, mute the responses on your tweet. You can make sure the tweet's private, that no one will ever see it. Uh, you could not post it at all, which would be the obvious thing. At some point, somebody gave her some perfectly found advice, but she wrote back, it's not that I know I'm going to mess it up, but more so that people expect you to present certain things in a palatable way. Time and time again, we've seen AOC, authors of color, I assume, be told that their work is not blank enough, while white authors can take their culture and profit from it. I don't know what she's talking about. What are you talking about? Where, where in the history of man <laughs> did someone who wrote a good book get to the publisher and the pu publisher said, well, I'd love to publish it, but, you know, you're a person of color, so we can't. And uh, furthermore, it's not enough of person of color. I mean, make up your mind. I get it. There was racism. There's still a little racism around. But you ain't in the civil rights era, honey. You're 18. You were born in 2002. Three, I guess. Yeah, 2003. Ain't a whole lot of racism in 2003. A lot of Americanism. You know, that was two years after 9-11. So people were waving American flags like until their arms got tired. Um, so what, what on a big call for racism, unless, uh, unless you were part of the crowd that was like, Oh, don't take your anger at it at anybody who's Arab because you know, that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> and there was like, not a whole lot of incidents there. And keeping in mind, we're a country of 320 million people. Um, so you know, this is the, an example of how wokeness just destroys people. You know, if they, if she wasn't so obsessively woke that she's kind of racist, in my view, um, she might actually take some advice. I wouldn't give her advice because uh, she sounds completely hostile to advice in her threat. Sounds like she's arguing with people who are giving her advice and saying, well, you don't understand. <laughs> okay. Don't be a writer. That's my advice. How about that advice? Don't be a writer. Who needs another shark in the pond? Ocean, whatever. Shark, tank. <laughs> don't write. I'll tell you right now, you're 18. Uh, you're a person of color. Oh my God, the publishers would trip over themselves if you had a manuscript. Oh my God, a person of color? And she's only 18? Oh, believe me. They they gouge each other's eyes out to get to you and give you a deal. But please, don't write your book. 
because it'll probably be awful anyway uh, because you're 18. It has nothing to do with your race. You have no experience. And quite frankly, to me, you sound like a narcissist. Uh, someone who's totally obsessed with herself and you just want people to react to you on Twitter. So instead, I'm reacting in my video and I'm not showing you at all on Twitter. Hopefully nobody will figure out who you are. And uh, <laughs> if you do figure out who I am, I uh, still won't talk about you. You could respond to me and I'll read the responses, but I won't show your Twitter feed. I won't give you any attention because that at the end of the day, I think, as a guy who can tell what characters are really saying through dialogue, what you're really saying is you want attention. You don't have enough attention. And I say, talk to your mommy and daddy. Because if they're not giving you enough attention at home, well, maybe it's time to grow up. You're 18. Maybe it's time to go out there and do something. Maybe it's time to get off of Twitter and stop crying. Um, no one's stopping you from writing your book. And in fact, as I've said, these publishers would trip over themselves to give you a contract. Oh, they'd give you money. Yeah, I can't get money out of them. But you? Absolutely. Because they're so woke and wonderful, they're willing to give anybody who's even remotely talented, who's young and a person of color, it's a perfect combination for them. Because they're woke idiots too. They're so woke and wonderful, they, they can brag about you. They're not going to brag about your book, and you'll see that soon enough if you take that deal. You'll see that quite simply, that you're just a cash cow to them. That you're just a tool for them to look good. And uh, down the road, when you get older, and you realize some of what I'm saying is actually true, you'll be like, oh God, he was right. These woke idiots, they're kind of racist. You're kind of racist too, in my view. I mean, white authors have, I wish I had the confidence of white authors. I mean, if a white author put that down, phew, they'd be all over him on Twitter. He'd be gone in a hot minute. But you can do that, I guess, because I guess self-flagellation is okay on Twitter. I don't know why anybody would put themselves down, put a, put down their entire race on Twitter. I mean, it seems like a terrible thing to do. Maybe you should analyze that, why you feel that way. That would be a book. How about a book about you being unable to write your damn book about your own culture? What the hell led to that? It's messed up. I mean, are you that unsure of who you are? Eh, you're 18, probably. So, anyhow, if you're like this young writer, here's my advice. First, uh, the easy advice, don't be a writer. Don't be a writer. You won't have to think. Go get yourself a job. Just make a lot of money. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of jobs like that. You'll have a comfortable life. Raise a family. Yeah, you don't have to think too hard. Just think about whatever insurance you're selling or, I don't know, go into a STEM field. They're looking for pilots over at Delta. Um, you'll have a comfortable life and you won't have to think about all these hard thoughts. Yeah, I, I don't want you to have to think about all those hard thoughts. But if you actually want to be a writer, well, the road <laughs> is a lot tougher. Yeah, you, you're going to actually have to look those demons in the eye. As they growl at you and salivate and as you want to desperately look away. But not everybody's cut out for that. So uh, I won't be upset if you bow out. I think you, you know, you'd just be a, 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 like a celebrity book person anyway. You know, it doesn't sound to me like you have anything to say. Uh, it, it, and looking over your Twitter feed, it just looks very reactionary. Um, so you think you have lots to say, but that's why you can't write. You actually don't have anything to say because you actually haven't thought about it. And you actually 
your thoughts are really other people's thoughts. You know? A lot of people in the woke world sort of gauge what people are thinking in Twitter, and then they, they sort of take on that and then feed it back. It's like an infinite feedback loop. And uh, when they get a way to feed it back to people a little harder, then that's where they feel, ah, yeah, see how smart I am? Yeah, I make you look like the racist. That's not writing. That's not even thinking. That's just being an a-hole, a woke a-hole. So uh, get off of Twitter would be my number one piece of advice. And actually read stuff. <laughs> You're only 18. I, I, I don't think you've read anything uh, worth a damn. Um, so that's my advice. So if you're like this young writer, uh, do not go on Twitter and pretend like you're not asking for advice and then get weird when people start giving you unsolicited advice when you're standing there. It's like somebody standing on the street corner going, I can't get my book published. I am oppressed and can't get my book published. And then somebody comes by and goes, what? You can't get your book published. What's 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 up with that? Oh, well, I didn't want your unsolicited advice. <laughs> can't someone just sit on a street corner and talk? You're on Twitter, twidiot. <laughs> Everybody can see your post. If you don't want unsolicited advice, I don't know why you're on Twitter. That's all it is. Is woke idiots giving each other unsolicited advice all day long. Uh, so, yeah. Get off of Twitter.